Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for another Motivational Monday Educational Webinar. My name is Janet Tebow, and I serve as the IDA Branch Council Chair. Today's topic is supporting reading comprehension, free resources for remote, hybrid, and in-person teaching. This webinar will help you integrate background knowledge, building into your reading instruction using free, research-based resources from Read ReadWorks that can be adapted to whatever teaching model you're using this fall, whether it's remote, hybrid, or in-person. Our next webinar will be supporting comprehension through writing about reading, instructional suggestions. Please continue to check our website and eblast for more information on all of our upcoming webinars. Thanks to everyone who's subscribed to our channel in the past two weeks. We hope that you're enjoying these webinars and are finding them informative. I encourage you all to like us on Facebook and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. The IDA conference is going virtual this year on November 13th and 14th. There will be sessions for everyone, so I invite you to register before the end of August to take advantage of our early bird rates. You can visit our website for more details and to register. Also, please continue to give to our COVID relief fund by clicking the donate link in the YouTube description or using the donate button on the Facebook page. This fund provides computers, laptops, tablets, and software to students and teachers in need, as well as tutoring and advocacy service stipends for parents. Back to school is here for so many, and we have a lot of people asking for our help. We're asking to, for you to donate just $1 or more, so please keep giving and invite people in your networks to help us out as well. And now I'm pleased to introduce our presenter for today. Suzanne Nobles is a Senior Director of Teaching and Learning at the nonprofit ReadWorks, where she leads their work on supporting teachers with free research-based best practices and resources for developing successful, joyful readers. Suzanne is also an adjunct instructor with Relay Graduate School of Education, helping early career teachers deepen their practice. Prior to joining ReadWorks, Suzanne was Partnerships Director for the Learner Variability Project at Digital Promise Global, where she led their collaborative work with developers, professional learning organizations, researchers, and educators. As a former teacher and administrator, Suzanne has spent her career working to empower educators and students with the research structures and tools for truly individualized learning. She earned her PhD in composition and new media from Old Dominion University, focusing her research on creating an effective digital communities of practice. She earned her MED in Curriculum and Instruction from Virginia Commonwealth University and her BA in English with Teacher Certification from Duke University. Suzanne, thank you so much for joining us and I'm gonna turn it over to you now, thanks. Great, thank you, Janet. And thank you um, to IDA for having me here today. I'm gonna take a minute to get my screen share going. Um, thank you to all of you tuning in as well. Um, I'm going to be talking through many, many things about background knowledge and how it supports reading comprehension. One thing I did want to tell everybody at the start is that thank you for your questions that you submitted when you registered. And I have worked those through, I'll show you my notes here, um, worked those throughout. And so I'll be referencing questions that people have asked, not by name, but just that this question was there so you know that that I've read those and they'll be um, addressed as we go as we go through. Um, so I do want to start with um, just a little bit more information. One question was how long I'd been a how long I'd been a teacher and and for whom um, I was a teacher for over twenty years. Um, middle and high school English was my focus area, and then coming into a department chair position of actually a K to twelve department, and so working across. Um, reading at, at all those grades. And then my Relay Graduate School of Education focus is on how you imbue those literacy skills that may be missing in an older reader. So I was working with fourth through 12th grade teachers um, with the idea that some of those early skills in kindergarten through third might not have been put in place. And so I'm thrilled to be here. Um, so much admire the work that that IDA does and all of you as members and supporters of IDA are doing in your classroom and with your own students, your own your own children. So let's begin. So just a quick look at where we'll go today. Um, I'm going to start with who we are at ReadWorks and then I'm going to go into the research behind background knowledge and how it impacts reading comprehension to give some of that 
foundation of what we're doing. I will then show you from the student view how ReadWorks can support all of your students. And this is PK-12, English language learners, special ed, adult learners as well. I'll be looking at three main products, as you can see here. And for each of them, I'll be showing you the differentiation supports that are available as well so that you can individualize down to a single student on the ReadWorks site. I'll then show you how you set up your free account and how you access that. So I will end with the teacher view. One of the things that I know from my experience as a remote teacher and my research into remote learning is that it's so critical to know what a student is seeing on their side first. And so that's why I'm starting with that. So you can experience what your students would see using these resources. And then finally, we'll wrap back into using ReadWorks for hybrid and remote learning. I'll talk about that all the way through, but we'll kind of bring it all together at the end. Okay, so what is ReadWorks? And this really ties, many of you had questions about what are the best free resources? What about schools with limited funding? How do I um, support all grades, all levels, parents, tutors? How do I differentiate? So that whole bundle of questions is answered with a resounding yes by ReadWorks. And so I wanna make sure everyone knows from the start that we are, as you can see here, a nonprofit Whereas Janet said, our mission is to support the growth of successful and joyful readers. And so as a nonprofit, we provide K-12 teachers resources that are, as you can see here, for free always. They always have been for, and we've been in existence for 20 years, and they always will be. That is our mission. And so we are in over 90%. We have in ReadWorks Educator in over 90% of K-8 to high poverty, highest poverty schools in the nation. And we're extremely, extremely um, deeply grateful that we can support all of those teachers. So we are here free, digitally available. And we do ask that, that you share us broadly. We are for parents as well, and it's free for parents too. And so for all educators, capital E, little e, um, that are working with students, helping them become stronger readers. Our mission, as you can see here is around two reading comprehension goals. And that's why I'm here today to talk about background knowledge. And so we focus on the growth in background knowledge and vocabulary as a key piece of reading comprehension. There is so much that happens uh, with phonemic awareness, decoding, all of those really, really key skills. And I just wanna say from the start that ReadWorks supports the growth in background knowledge and vocabulary in order for other great resources to support those other key early literacy skills. And so we'll be talking about how you build background knowledge and vocabulary, even in pre-fluent readers, even in emerging readers, and then in independent readers. So through all of those stages. And we do that through effective and engaged reading practice with our resources. So our resources include, I just wanted you to get sort of an overview. Um, we have the highest quality library of nonfiction and literary passages in the country. We have thousands. They are hand curated. We work with authors to create high quality, complex, grade level appropriate passages that students find engaging and interesting. We then have text dependent question sets to help students go back and practice those critical comprehension skills predicting, summarizing by rereading into the text. We then have differentiation features. As I said, I'll show you those as I go into the site, but it is in order to support all learners needs as we can. And a teacher can assign these to one learner up to a whole class. And then we have teacher guidance. And so we do offer webinars, recorded webinars, one pagers, teacher guides, all for free. And so I'll go over a lot today um, with who we are, but do know that there's a lot of resources out there as well. Finally, and most importantly, we are one piece of the science of reading. And so that critical, as I said, building those critical early literacy skills needs to happen. We then are sitting at the other piece, which is understanding the importance of background knowledge and vocabulary in reading comprehension. So how can we help? How do we help? How do we hope that we help? And I, I start with this at the very beginning to tie to Janet's point that we're here to help no matter how your student is learning, remote, hybrid, in-person. 
because you can use all of our resources in three ways. So we do have digital classes that can be assigned so students can complete that work online and remotely hybrid or even in person in a classroom at a station. All of our content though is also formatted to print easily. And we have many teachers that do that as they may give packets to students who don't have broadband access. When the um, texts are ready to be printed, they're, they're a PDF. And so we have opened up our licensing for the fall. We did this as well in the spring so that teachers can post those PDFs, email them to students or post them in their closed LMSs, their closed websites, just for copyright reasons um, so that students can access them that way with um, being able to get to a hotspot, access them and then have them loaded on their laptops or their phones. And then finally, we have a project mode. And so if you're sharing a screen like I am today, you can teach a lesson using ReadWorks, again, virtually or in person using a smart board. So I just want to pause for a minute here and say, just think about the way that it's going to help you best to think about these resources. I'll mention all these ways all the way through, but know that that's a lot and where you really should um, want to focus your attention today on how we can best help you, your students, and your um, children. Okay, so let's now look at the research behind ReadWorks mission of building background knowledge and vocabulary. So we're going to begin with the seminal study, which was wrecked in Leslie in the late 80s, as you can see there. Now this study has been replicated many times over the decades, but it's always good to go back to the first one. So what this study did was take a group of students and divide them into four, as you can see here with this chart. And so using existing reading scores from the classroom, first dividing by high and low reading ability, but then adding this additional division of knowledge of baseball. And so you can see the yellow and blue, high reading ability, but one has high knowledge of baseball, one has low, and then the same in the orange and green for low reading ability. The reason for this is that the study set out to see how these students did comprehending a passage about baseball. So they really were trying to hone in on what does background knowledge do for reading comprehension. So here's what they found. And they were really surprising and exciting findings, to be honest. So if we look at this, we see, not surprisingly, that the high reading ability and high knowledge group did the best. But if you look right after that and not so far less or lower were those, I'm gonna use air quotes, low reading ability students who had high knowledge of baseball. And then further below that, a bigger difference were the high reading ability, but a low knowledge of baseball. And then finally came our low reading ability and our low knowledge of baseball. So, as I said, this has been replicated across other studies as well. So if we take this information and we ask ourselves, what should we as educators do? What does this mean for us as educators? So what we learn from this is that reading tests are really, and this is a, this is a quote, these quotes are from Natalie Wexler and some of them are quoting um, Daniel Willingham here, are really knowledge tests in disguise. When students knew about baseball, and they read a passage about baseball, their reading comprehension increased. So comprehension depends on what students bring to the text, whether they are a high or a low reader. Those reading skills matter too. They need to be able to make the sound letter connection, all those important skills, but what they bring to the text is just as critical. And so knowing that, we then start to work through why, like what is happening here? And we, we can see that the tests aren't directly assessing content knowledge. The goal wasn't to assess a student's knowledge about baseball. Instead, it was to understand that we all draw on our own knowledge to make meaning. And so we draw on content knowledge, those reading tests draw on a student's content knowledge to try to assess their comprehension. And a student who knows more about baseball has more knowledge to work out an unfamiliar passage about baseball. So the takeaway then, so that's sort of what's happening behind 
the mind as they read. So the takeaway is that the students with the broadest knowledge have the best chance of demonstrating their comprehension. And, and there it sits. We have the best chance of comprehension when we have a broad knowledge base. And we know, well, I think we all know, I knew as a teacher that I could not possibly instruct enough to cover all of this knowledge. It's, it's not just in us as educators to do this. Instead, our students need it deeply and broadly in their lives. And as an equity concern, this is not the same for all students. All students do not have the same advantage for building this background knowledge and vocabulary. So that's our mission at ReadWorks is to provide these free resources to help you help your students build this huge, deep, broad base of knowledge while they're still in that important instruction building their reading skills. And those can happen concurrently. And then as they become those independent readers, it keeps happening and they keep building up that knowledge. So there were a few questions, more than a few, about how do you best support comprehension? And what about students who are very behind in their reading? And a lot of it is, is that they are behind in that content knowledge. There are certainly literacy skills that can still be taught. And that's another great IDA webinar by a different expert than me. Um, but what ReadWorks can offer are rich texts at all grade levels, differentiated so students can access this knowledge and really start to build up that base. And that is what my high school teachers that I taught, my upper elementary ones would find is that lack of knowledge had been, been built all along and what do we do with that? And that's where we're here to help. So that brings us then into our products and where it is that we have these resources to help build that background knowledge and vocabulary. So one of the questions, and it was a brilliant question because it's exactly how background knowledge should be approached is, how can I daily build this background knowledge? If we really, really want to help enrich our students and deepen what they know and what they bring to a text, we wanna do it every day as educators, of course we do. So great question. So that's the first resource I'm gonna begin with is what we call at ReadWorks, article a day. And the great thing about it is it's exactly what it sounds like. So we have hand curated, topically connected text sets so students can read an article a day for a week. It is a 10 minute routine, very simple, and it builds background knowledge by reading, writing, and then potentially, depending on your remote or in-person um, situation, speaking as well. So let me show you, there is a little bit of research um, behind this that we've done on our own product. So in a New York State um, pilot study, so we were looking at end of year test scores in New York State schools. Schools that had students doing article a day regularly showed this 15% year over year gain. Now I wanna go back to that background knowledge research. It's not because the teacher or we knew the topics that were going to be on those end of year tests. Obviously we didn't. Instead, those students had read widely in 10 minutes a day and really built that knowledge and by practicing reading so that when they came to that end of the year test, they had more background knowledge to bring to whatever they read. And however they could tackle it, they had better tools for tackling it. And then this other one is just a great number. Imagine in just 10 minutes a day, third graders read almost 50,000 extra words in a school year. Okay, checking my notes to make sure I've gotten that. Oh, I did wanna mention one more thing about the topically connected sets. One more research point before I go on. One of the things that research has shown is that knowledge is like Velcro. It's actually a Natalie Wexler um, analogy that I love. So knowledge is like one side of Velcro. And when we get new knowledge, it just sticks and it builds and it builds and it builds. And so if we read within one topic, we gain more knowledge exponentially faster. So, so much faster. So if you imagine a student, a young student reading an article a day set about birds, they read one article, they hear that birds fly. 
the next day they read an article and it's about wings and feathers and they've understood flying a little bit and now they're piecing wings and feathers on. Then the next day they may learn about flightless birds and then they think, oh, wait, I knew birds, I knew wings, how does this work? And they have a frame to understand a flightless bird from a typical bird. And they piece that together all during the week. And that's why we have these topically connected, thousands of topically connected article a day sets. So let me stop talking about it and let me show you how this goes. So I'm gonna pop back and forth to the ReadWork site. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how a student would log in. Um, and so I'm just gonna log in here as a student. So obviously the student just goes to student login. This is how, if they were doing a digital class, they would access our work. Obviously, if you had printed a set, they would go right to their paper. Article a day can be fully printed as well. So student logs in, they have their class code. ReadWorks assigns to each class a six digit code. So they simply have to type in their class code and then they find their name. Now you may have noticed on that prior screen, there was a login with Google. We do have Google Classroom integration. I'll show you that later, but what I really wanna show you from here is the student experience and article a day. And then the password for all students is one, two, three, four. You can change it and individualize if you want, but the basic one, one, two, three, four. And they continue in. And I'm gonna say no thanks to this. And what I want you to see is that we have article a day sets here. Now we have two of them because I'm doing a couple of different um, webinars, but I also wanted to be able to show you how it looked depending on the time of the week. So this is Monday. So let's, I'm a Kier, I'm arriving on Monday to my article a day set and it will look like this and I will click into it. But if I've already done an article in my set, it will look like this. And so say this was Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, it will say continue. So that's the difference here, but it's Monday. So let's go in here to the article a day set, mental and emotional health. Now, here we sit and we all know as teachers that students knowing the purpose of their learning is really important. So right here is the purpose of article a day written for students. Article a day is great for remote learning if this is what your school is doing because it's a daily routine. And that's one of the biggest things we learned in the spring was the importance of those classroom routines we used. How can we make them at home? And teachers really found if every day they said, go start with your article a day set or end with your article a day set, but knowing students knowing that every day they're doing something that is similar and familiar. Now, students, again, this is for pre-fluent or independent readers. So students can always listen to the directions. We also have supports for English language learners. And I want you to notice over here, Akir is noted by me, his teacher, to be a native speaker of Arabic. So I've turned on the English language learner supports and now Akir can listen to or read the directions of article a day in Arabic. Now, I do want you to notice that the articles themselves are still in English. We as a nonprofit have to focus our funds, um, our donations as best we can. And our focus is on learning to read in English. It's incredibly important to learn to read in multiple languages in a student's native language. There are great resources, resources for that. We do not have the funding or the resources to support powerful, authentic texts in different languages, but the students can have article a day, the structure of it in their native language, and they could go back and forth like this. Okay, so Akir has come. He's looked at this, he's listened to, he's read the directions. I'll put them in English so we can see them. He has seen the purpose to build knowledge. And then it tells him, this is what you do. You choose one article. So he goes down to this set about mental and emotional health. Now, if you notice, there are six key articles and then there are two challenge articles. And so we also offer differentiation within an article a day set where we will offer boost and challenge articles. And it depends upon the set and you can search for this. Where challenge articles allow students who are, in the, who are doing really well and interested in the topic and succeeding to push themselves to a slightly higher level. When there are boost articles, they are slightly lower level. And so a student has that flexibility within a set of what to choose. 
So they read these and they think, okay, I'm interested in this one. And they go in. Now, more differentiation supports. A teacher can turn on the audio of the article for the whole class, a group of students, or an individual student. And so here, a Akir can listen to the article in English. We also have a set of student tools, and these are really great for um, executive functioning issues. That was another question um, we had, which is what do I do with students who need extra support, um, cognitive support, ex executive function, and attention? So let me show you these tools. The first is actually visual needs. And so we can do the text, two sizes bigger. Then students who need to track paragraph by paragraph can add paragraph numbers. Then we have a guided reading strip. This is great for focus and attention to gray out and focus to track line by line what they're reading. And then finally, we have a split screen, but I wanna go to that um, from my next screen. So what a student does is read their article. So Akir would read this or listen. And again, there were questions, lots of questions about pre-fluent readers. This is a fourth grade text, not an early text, but all of them can have audio. So a student can be listening to a text and still learning and building that background knowledge. So now Akir reads it and then says, okay, I want to go to my book of knowledge. And this is where the writing component comes in. Students write what they've learned. It's not a test. Instead, it's this building of a portfolio of knowledge. And this is where I wanna show you the split screen. So a student can, doesn't have to memorize the article. Instead, rather than tax that working memory of what did that article say, they can go back, look over the article again, and then come here and say, I learned that listening is important. I also learned that I should paraphrase. And they, so they go through and they can write. These sentence frames, I learned that, and I also learned that, are also for English language learners. Those do not exist for non-English language learners. They're there as these prompts to help them with their writing in English. So then all Akir does is click submit and he's done. And then the next day, now we'll see, he would choose his next article. And day by day, he's building knowledge here about mental and emotional health, connecting it from article to article. He then can see in his big book of knowledge, all that he has learned. So this is just August, we've done these two sets. But if we go to see all, all of the different articles and all the knowledge that he's built over time, and they'd be more likely to be this long. I've obviously done some sample ones that are short. So that's article a day on the site with all of the supports we offer around it. So let me pop back over here to the slides. Okay, so just a quick review of this. And we did have um, some questions around how do I engage kids at home? How do I engage kids in reading? And how do I assign independent work at home with remote learning or work that a parent can do? And I wanna bring those questions in right now because really article a day is a great answer for all of them. We know from years of working with teachers on article a day that kids love article a day, they really do. And so to know that they get to read an article somewhat of their choice, learn something, write down what they learned, it's very low stakes. They really enjoy doing it and it's short and as I said, enjoyable. Also, this is great, as I said, during um, the prior slide is that this is great for an independent work routine. All of this can be done independently and then or with a parent. And think about how great it would be if a parent is talking about an article they read together and how you're really drilling that background knowledge in even more. And parents always want to know what can I do to help. Conversations around what you read are so critical, as you all know, as educators and as many of you parents know as well just to talk about that knowledge, to drive it home and see that we're comprehending what we read and what we learn. So just a quick review of that. So these first three steps can be done independently during remote learning. So the purpose is there for you in article a day on the site. Students then read or listen to that article and then they complete their book of knowledge. Now there is a fourth step 
that if you have a virtual class meeting is where we bring in the speaking piece. And this is where students share verbally their knowledge. Now, as I said, with parents, this is great. They can do step four at home or in your virtual class meeting, students can share. And imagine if they've all read different articles, but around the same topic, around this mental and emotional health or birds or dinosaurs or rocks, whatever their topic is for that week. Okay, so that's article a day. Make check of my notes, make sure I covered everything there. So now let's look at our second free resource. And this is the student library. This is about independent reading, but also still for building background knowledge and vocabulary. So research suggests that reading quantity develops critical reading skills and a reader's knowledge base. And so the, again, our mission at ReadWorks, building that background knowledge and vocabulary through engaged and effective reading practice, putting those two pieces together. Also, independent reading provides some motivation by choice. And so that's what we hope um, to be able to offer. So what is the library? So basically we're opening up thousands of our passages on topics from science to history to art. We're giving students a library in their homes. Now, just so you all know, what do they have access to? Um, a student will have access in a library to, if they're a grade four student like Akir, everybody starts with the kindergarten text and then they get up to two grades above. So Akir has access to kindergarten to sixth grade texts. The reason for that is that I read ReadWorks kindergarten text all the time and still learn things. Remember that part of our mission is that building of background knowledge. And so Akir can learn, he may not be getting the high level reading practice he needs, but he's learning and that's important in this outside independent time all the way up to sixth grade where he can get grade level practice. And then if he's really interested in a topic, research has shown that kids will tackle and be successful with higher level texts that they are interested in. So we wanna give that whole range for students. The library has no assessments, just reading for the joy of learning. However, as a teacher, you can still see what they read and there is a reading log. So again, it's like article a day. It doesn't feel like school, doesn't feel like a test. Instead, it's this reading for the joy of learning. And ReadWorks recommends articles based on interest. And so each day we provide new recommendations based on what they've read, what they have said they enjoyed and what other students are enjoying. This is so critical right now. I'm in Washington, DC. Schools are still being, are gonna be virtual. My public library down the street is still closed. Students don't have access to their libraries or to your classroom where all those great books may be. So we at ReadWorks can be that library for them digitally. So let's look at what this looks like again for Akir and then what differentiation supports we offer for different types of learners. Okay, so I'm back in Akir's site. And you can see I've been doing his assignments. I was in the book of knowledge. I can go back to assignments, but notice right here is library and right here is library. So all Akir has to do is click go to his library. And right here, he has all the recommendations of what he's interested in. Now over here on the settings icon, when students first enter the library, they will be asked what interests them. So you can see here that Akir picked four interests and if I close this, you can see he has his history interest. He has what's popular for other students, what we've recently added, and then his other interests, <clears throat> excuse me, interests. And these change daily. You can see that students can bookmark something to read it later. So he has some things bookmarked, or he can say a few more bookmarked, or he can say, I wanna read about donuts right now. And he simply clicks in. So again, for differentiation supports, there is audio on all of the articles and those same text um, sizing paragraph number and the guided reading slip strip that I showed you before all still exist here. So supporting students in the same way. I'm gonna show you a few more features in just a minute, but I wanna show you what a student does when they read. So they read their article or listen to it and then they get to the bottom and this is what you as a teacher can see and so they write something, are you finished reading? Add a note about this reading passages. I love donuts. I learned how they were made. I want to make a donut. And so whatever they want to write here. 
and they click on done. Then they can favorite it. They could say, I did like that. I do want more passages like that. And then they simply go home and they land back and they get updated um, text, but they can see you've read this one, this one you liked. Now, right here is that reading log. And this is what you as a teacher see on your end. So they're not just reading randomly, you do get to see what they're doing. So you can see everything Akir has read and written in that reading log all along. There's also this great tally here of how much they've read, which is um, motivating. Okay, so one more differentiation thing. I, I told you I wanted to show you one more thing. So if you go here to the search bar, Right here, our library has all of our ebooks. And so pre-fluent readers can always listen to any of our texts as I show you that audio. However, we have amazing digital picture books. I look at a new one each time I come in. Let's look at Ancient Egypt this time. So it is our high quality nonfiction passage done by beautiful art. And we have great artists that donate their time. So each one is illustrated differently for this really powerful experience of a beautiful picture book. And they simply click through and they can listen. This is human voice audio on all the picture books. Many of our passages also have human voice audio, but all the picture books do. And so the student has, has a book read to them. They can read this with a parent. They can read it um, on their own. Um, however that they wish in their time. I say, I taught high schoolers as well, they love picture books too. So this is for pre-fluent readers, but really for all readers because they're just so fun and really interesting and engaging. Okay, so that's our library. Let me pop back here and show you our final resource, which are our reading passages and text-dependent questions. So one of the things that, a, a question that many of you had is, how do I help my kids make inferences? How do I help them really practice comprehension? Basically, how do I help them do that? So that's our reading passages. So our mission, building background knowledge of vocabulary through effective and engaged reading practice. And that is these question sets. So you take an individual passage, and then you have a set of five to 10 questions that come along with it. So this next slide is going to be a lot on it, but just don't worry, you don't have to memorize it all. I'll explain why there's so much on here. This is to show you that our question sets are very carefully written and what you can expect as an educator giving them to your student or your child. So we structure the first five questions up to inference and then main idea. And so the first question will always be an explicit information. Go back to the text, make sure you understood it. Then we start to look at that important knowledge of text structure. How does that help you understand? Then we start to pull in evidence. Then we move to an inference. And then question five is a main idea or theme. We have five question sets. The longer ones then move on into deeper skills, as you can see here. They also become open-ended. They'll end with a couple of open-ended questions, as you can see here. ReadWorks auto grades the multiple choice and teachers then grade the open-ended. So this is a really great way for both independent work, being able to assign a student a passage and a question set, and then you can see the results, you can give them feedback, and then they can try them again. You can actually reassign them. So it's great for remote. It's also great for a discussion, for a small reading group discussion, virtually or live with our question sets. Okay, so how do I get started? So we've moved through all of this, all of these ways that you can use these resources to build that background knowledge and vocabulary. So let's pop back over to ReadWorks. And I do wanna show you before I leave here, I wanna show you a question set in action before I show you the teacher view. So right here, survival strategy of hummingbirds. This is Akira's question set that he needs to do. Now, as a teacher, I assigned him the audio. He has all these tools for differentiation. And then he has his question set. Now he can use split screen and he can look at the question set next to the passage. He can also, as you see, annotate. So he can go through and highlight, pick a color, add a comment. And so here you can see, this is the topic sentence. Here you can see, I like this word and all the annotations. You as a teacher see this on your end. 
Akir goes through and simply clicks the answers that he sees that he, that he feels are right. So you can see explicit information. What does this text describe? It's a descriptive passage. And then we start to get to inferencing what information from the, oh, sorry, this is conclusion and evidence, what information supports this conclusion. Then starting to inference, what does plunge likely mean? And then finally, the main idea of that text. So this is a five question set. So that's what it would look like from a student. They'd click submit, then you can see it on your end. Okay, so I'm gonna log out as a keyer. And then I'm gonna show you all as teachers or parents how you can log in for free. So all you have to do is click sign up right here or right here. And then see it says educator or parent sign up. So it's available there. You simply put your name, email and password um, and then you click get started. It'll ask you a little bit more information about you and then you have access to all of our resources. I'm not gonna do this because I already have an account and I'll confuse things, um, but that's all you need to do. Um, the reason we collect some information is to help target new texts that new things we're offering to you, as well as to let our donors know who, who we're supporting in general. Um, and we do have a very strong privacy policy. We do not collect any individual information about students um, and we protect all student privacy and um, obviously teacher privacy as well. We do not, we know your names obviously because you give it to us, but we don't ever sell to third parties or anything like that as a, as a nonprofit, that's not what we ever do. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to login. So after you have an account, you just log in with your email and your password. And then you can come to free webinars, um, but you land on this page. Now, for any of you who wish to do a digital class or to project to teach, you want to start here at class admin. Those of you that wish to print materials, I'll get to that as well. So just wait a minute um, for me on that one. So here in class admin, the first thing you'll notice is you can have as many classes as you want. I have a lot of them. And then all you have to do is go here to create a class. Right here is where you import. If you have Google Classroom, you'll pick your Google account and you will align to that. So that's how you align to Google Classroom. Otherwise, you don't have it, no problem. You create a new class. You pick the grade, we'll do second grade. Um, we'll call them our second grade class. And then you go next. And then here, if you have students' Google accounts, you can use it, use their emails to send them login or you just roster. And you simply paste your roster into here. So I will put in, um, some names. So I go through until I have my class on here. I click add. And then as I said to you before with Akir, all the passwords are one, two, three, four. And here we are, we have our class. And right here is how your students will log in. There's that six digit code. And that's the password. So you can literally can copy this and send it to them, send it to the parents, send it to the students. This is how they will log in. I do want to show you that you can work together as teachers up here in options, you can manage co-teachers. You can add co-teachers to a class so that you can be working with your co-teacher assigning, looking at results, doing all of this together. You can also rename your class if you didn't like your class name. Okay, so right here, I wanna start with the library. So if you want your students to have access to that independent reading, you click here and you simply enable the library. It's as simple as that. And now your students have access. This is a second grade class. So they have access from kindergarten to fourth grade, all of them. And you can say, read for 10 minutes, read for 15 minutes. So that's all in class admin. Now I wanna show you how you do that differentiation, how you assign work to really meet your students' needs. That's over here in find content. So here is our filter. And so you can see, I wanna start with article a day. So if I click article a day sets, I filter down to 500 of them. I can then say, I want second grade sets for my second grade class. I can say, I really liked those boost and challenge articles that Suzanne mentioned a little bit ago. I want sets that have those. You could go down and pick a topic and you just keep going. So I'm gonna go here to exploring continents. So now those of you that are printing ReadWorks resources, here's where you will land. You search for the content and you simply click print. 
and you can do one article or you can do all articles, including Boost and Challenge. You click print and you get a PDF. It takes a minute, I wanted to make sure it could load. So you get this PDF. This has all the Boost and Challenge articles and then you see they have the articles and the images. Right here, you can download this PDF if you wish then you can put it on a closed LMS, you can email it, or you can print and have packets for your students. Okay, those of you that are not printing, but instead wish to digitally assign. So you've created a digital class and you want to assign and you want to be able to differentiate. So I'm gonna go here to my fourth grade class. And what you can see here is that you always have choices, audio or not, boost challenge or not, and then you can pick your class. Now notice down here is where you can do the whole class or specific students. And so I can, and this is where I turn on those ELL features. This is how Akir got Arabic. So I can turn that on for my ELL students. So I can say that I want my first, these four students to have the audio. And I want them to have the boost articles. They need a little extra support with this set. This is going to be next week's set. So I'll start it next Monday. I can't believe it's already September and it'll go through Friday. And I click assign. And I've got these four students have all of this. I can then say assign again. And now I'm gonna deselect those four. And now for these, however many students, I don't want them to have the audio but I'm gonna give them boost and I'm gonna give them challenge. And you can move this around student by student, groups of students until you've given everybody exactly what they need. One of the things I also want to say at this point is that you may have tracked that I'm assigning a second grade set to my fourth grade class. Many teachers begin the year with article a day, this slightly lower level, and then they move up but the students never see the grade. It's all okay. They get an engaging set of articles that they enjoy. You click assign and then you just keep going till you're done. Now, the last thing I wanna show you before I pop back to the slides is that you do the same exact thing with your reading passages. So right here, reading passages, and then I can pick my full question set or the express, that's the five question set. I go in and it's the exact same thing and I can print it or I can assign it and I can do all the same specific students or the whole class, same thing, audio or not, same, same breakdown. Okay, so I wanna wrap up. I see I'm at almost at 350 and um, I wanted to end with some questions people had about, you know, sort of how do I put all this together for remote um, and hybrid learning. Okay, so asynchronous. Let's say you're fully remote. You may meet with your students um, virtual sometimes, but when you're not meeting live. So those passages and multiple choice questions for independent practice are really great. You can do print as I showed you or digital, and then you can give feedback. You actually can go in under assignments in progress on ReadWorks, give them feedback and reassign them and they can try them again. Independent reading in the student library. Now this is obviously only digital unless you print a whole packet of passages and you could send those home. This is great. You could try to build community by having students recommend favorite passages via email to their classmates. It's also a great resource for research projects. Thousands of nonfiction articles. They could say, I wanna research rocks. And then they go and they have a library at their fingertips. And then finally, article a day, both print or digital. And you can use the book of knowledge entries to try to create a community activity, again, of an email or a shared document. And then synchronous. This is if you have a virtual class at the same time or you're in person. You can do collaborative annotations on a reading passage. I showed you how students can annotate. You can actually share your screen. Imagine sets of students, you know, you have a group of students with you, you're reading a passage, you're annotating, they're annotating on their screen and you're teaching them or you annotate a little bit and then you say to them, how about you finish annotating this and then they do it on their own and you can see that work that they've done in your assignments in progress. 
And then finally, article a day is a class activity. As I said from this at the beginning, there was that step four, that share out, um, which is a really great way to bring the speaking part of article a day into um, the into your virtual or your live classroom. Okay, so questions. There were a few more that I didn't um, get to as you know within the the main part. Um, so I did want to talk about, somebody asked about paired texts, if we have any paired texts. And so I do wanna show that. So I'm gonna pop back over here and I'm gonna go, so here I am going back to find content. I'll clear all my filters and you will see right here that we do have a content type that is paired texts. And what these are, we'll look at archeological discoveries are two texts, which you can see right here, they've been paired because they both, they address a similar topic. And so students can read both texts. And then the question set is to think about one article, think about the second article, and then compare them. These are all open-ended question sets. And so the students would be typing or writing um, their answers, depending on um, how you're having them do that. So we do have paired text. Another person asked about how do you make vocabulary fun? How do you do vocabulary well? So I wanted to show you how ReadWorks supports that other piece, background knowledge and vocabulary building. So first of all, all of our articles, and you may have, I'm sure you noticed this as I was clicking through um, many of them, have vocabulary. And I'm gonna click here, just so you, I'll tell you what that is in a minute. So if I go here, all of the articles have words pulled out. These are key tier two and tier three words. And they students can click, and this is a human voice audio pronunciation of the word. We have a student friendly definition of the word. We have an image, and then we have Spanish and Chinese, the words in Spanish and Chinese. So we have that wordsmith as our great partner providing all of that information. So right in the context, they can explore and you can help them explore more about the words. We also have with us some of our article a day sets, activities that are graphic organizer based. So meaning mapper is where students explore connections among words. And so they get a focus word climate. And you can see here, it's a brief teacher led activity where they start with at the beginning of the week with one word. So for this example set, it was fossil and then they connect words that they're reading together and they build out this graphic organizer. So I wanna show you where you find that. So I clicked article a day sets and then down here, that meaning mapper, that's where you'll find the sets that have this activity on them to build connections. We also have word detective. And this is for exploring word parts, prefixes, suffixes, root words, um, just a, again, a graphic organizer activity for exploring word parts. Okay. And then the final question around this was, how do I give feedback in a remote situation? And this is where I wanna show you assignments in progress. So right here, the one tab I haven't showed you yet. So this is where you see everything your students are doing. My fall demo class is doing nothing, <laughs> but my fourth grade class, there is mental and emotional health. That's what you can see right here, Akir read his, and you can go in and see what he read right here. You also can go in and see their editing, I'm sorry, their annotating. So remember I told you that you can see their responses, but here you can see what Akir annotated. So you can watch their annotations, which is really, really great. You also can reassign. So I wanna show you that with a different passage. Hold on, let me go to past assignments. So here with Adas Ababa. So Akira did it and he didn't do very well. However, I can reassign it. So I can say to Akira, redo it, which means I'm gonna wipe everything away you did. You're gonna just give it another go. And this maybe you've discussed it with them and you want them just to have a clean slate to go again. Or I've given you some feedback. I want you to see your work and I want you to revise it. Both of those are options. And when you're grading it, you can give feedback all down this side. This is all feedback you're giving for that work. Okay, so we've reached 354. Um, I've hit all the questions that I can hit. So thank you again for listening. I'm gonna stop share and 
bring us back um, together and let Janet take over. Thanks, Suzanne, so much for sharing all of the wonderful things that ReadWorks can do for teachers and parents as they look at preparing for the fall. Um, I have a few closing remarks. So thanks everyone for joining us again today. Please consider donating to the COVID-19 Relief Fund. Please be sure to register for the IDA conference. Um, subscribe and like us on social media. And certainly if you live in an area with an IDA branch, please connect with them and consider getting involved with the work that they do. Um, be on the lookout for upcoming webinars and we hope that today was, was helpful in getting your head around um, however your fall is gonna, um, gonna start. Um, stay safe, be well, thanks so much for joining us and please join us at our next one in a couple of weeks. And Suzanne, thank you so much for all that information. That was really wonderful. Thanks everyone, enjoy. Yeah, Take thank care. you everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.